Welcome to basic form creation using ASP.NET. This video series will show you how to create basic web pages using ASP.NET and Enterprise Services to connect to IBM Cognos TM1. In this video we will focus on creating a prototype web page that can be used to validate the design with the users before we invest the effort in connecting to data sources and do the final formatting. The basic steps for creating a web page are to first construct a prototype or page layout to illustrate how the web page will look and work. Then publish the subsets and views required for each of the controls and next add an enterprise services reference and create the data sources that will be used by each of the controls. Connect these data sources to the controls and then finally apply the formatting to make it production ready. We will begin our prototype by first looking at the information in TM1 to help us design the layout of the web page. For this demonstration, we will create a web page that allows us to display the data within the employees queue in a format similar to the monthly compensation planning view. When we open this view in TM1, we are presented with a series of drop-downs in the title elements that the user can select from. There is the version dimension, the department's dimension, and the year. Once the user has selected from these dimensions, the list of employees by month is shown. Our form will operate in a similar manner. So let's move now to Visual Studio and create a new project. We will use C Sharp as our language and then create a web-based ASP.NET application. Let's call it Basic Form and then click OK. Now Visual Studio will create an empty ASP.NET application ready for us to design our prototype. So we first need to go into the design view and then we'll change the title to Welcome to Enterprise Services. Okay, so we are ready to design the form content and we know that we want to put some drop-down controls as well as a data grid on the page. So we'll start by putting the drop-downs at the top and the data grid below and we will also probably want to put in some labels in front of the drop-downs so that the user knows what is being selected. So let's first create a layout table that will hold the drop-downs and their labels. First, we remove the informational message and replace it with a 2 by 3 table. We do this by going to the table menu, choose insert table and select three rows and two columns and we'll set the width of the table to 500 pixels and then choose OK. The first column will be the labels for the drop-downs and in the first row we will put version and in the second row we will enter business unit and in the last row we will add year. Now we'll resize it a little bit uh, so that they fit well. 120 pixels should work here. Okay, so now let's add some drop-downs. We can bring up the toolbox here by selecting from the View menu and choose Toolbox. And in the standard group we can drag drop-down lists to each of the rows in the right column. Now version and business unit list should probably be a little bit bigger so we can increase their size. Let's make uh, the version 120 pixels wide. The business unit will make that at 250 and for the year we'll set it at 100. 
Let's also give names to these controls so that we can reference them later. And we will call the version dropdown DDL version. And then for business unit, we'll call it DDL business unit. And then finally, the year dropdown will be called DDL year. So let's add some space after the table to prepare for our grid now. And in our prototype, we want to be able to show a tabular display without having to bind it to any data source yet. So for now, we're going to add a table object. And then later, we're going to replace it with a more powerful grid view. Let's click on the table object in the standard group in the toolbox and then drag it into the form. Now let's assign it a name. We'll call it TB Planning and we'll give it a width of 900 pixels. So if we go back now to TM1 and we look at the view, you notice that we have one column where the employee name is and then one column for each month starting in September. So we have a total of 13 columns. Let's return now to Visual Studio and add 13 columns to our table object. Since it's easier to work in a textual version for adding duplicate columns, we'll just switch to the source view and we'll add in a table header row and then a table header cell and this will be for the employee name so we'll put in a title of employee and now we can add another table cell for the September column and then label it. So with September we'll go ahead and copy and paste the remaining cells at least 11 more months and then we'll go ahead and update the headings to be October and finally through August. Okay. So we're ready to add a data row and we'll use Fred Jones as the employee. And a hundred dollars for each column. Just enough to see how the table will look. Okay, now let's duplicate a few rows here so that we have something that we can present. Now, although the form is not fully formatted, we can preview the web page so that we can use it to walk through with the users a design concept and get approval before we proceed with the final design. This concludes creating a prototype web page using ASP.NET. The next video we will show you how to use enterprise services to publish views and subsets for use in ASP.NET web pages.